Hello and welcome to ProdCon and to my presentation, Getting Started with Virtual Consulting in 2019. My name is Paul Miners and if you are tuning into this live or watching the replay, regardless, thank you so much for watching. Uh, really is a pleasure to have your attention today and I'm really excited to share my story and help you get started with consulting in 2019. If this is something you're thinking about, um, I encourage you to jump in with two feet because consulting has changed my life. And today I do wanna share my story and give you five tips on how to get started. And I don't make that statement lightly. Consulting really has changed my life and uh, it's helped me to build the business that I want to build. It's helped me to create a lifestyle business where I can work on my terms, do the things that I want to do, uh, earn a good income, help people I want to help and work with people I want to work with and build the lifestyle that I want. And I think virtual consulting is a great way to earn a decent income online quickly. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really excited to, to be helping you today. <clears throat> So before we get into it, a little bit about me. If you have no idea who I am, my name is Paul Miners. You can find me at paulminers.com. <clears throat> and I teach people about productivity, business, and self-improvement. So there's kind of two halves to my business. I sell digital products like eBooks and courses, and I have my blog and my podcast where I share content and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about these different things. And then I am a consultant. That's where the majority of my time and where my income is derived. So I consult on software tools like Asana, which is a project management tool, Pipedrive, which is a sales CRM, MailChimp, which most people have heard of is an email marketing tool, and Zapier as well, which is an automation platform. And basically, these are skills that I already had that I've now been able to monetize. And there, I just found that there are a lot of uh, small business owners, medium, even large business owners, who don't have time to learn how to use these tools. And they're more than willing to work with a consultant virtually, I'll add, um, to fast track their learning and to train their teams on how to use these different tools. And I say that virtually. I'm actually recording this. I work from my home base here in Auckland in New Zealand. Most of my clients are actually in the United States. I do a bit of work in uh, Canada and Australia as well. But it's crazy. Here I am in New Zealand on the complete opposite end of the world consulting to companies in the United States. So that's a little bit about me and, uh, and, and my business and what I'm, what, I'm a part of, uh, what I'm about. My story. So I built my business on the side while working full time. I actually started probably five or six years ago. And I spent a, number, spent a number of years trying to build my blog talking about productivity. And I went probably the traditional online business route. Like most people, I thought, let me try and sell digital products online like ebooks and courses and things. Because that's really sexy, right? If you can sell a product online make something once, it's really high margin, sell it thousands and thousands of times, you can live on a beach and drink mo uh, mojitos for the rest of your life, great. But the problem with that, the problem with selling digital products online, the problem with affiliate marketing is that it takes a long time to build the audience that you need to generate a sustainable income that way. And I spent years trying to crack that nut with uh, not, a, not a huge amount of success. I made a bit of money, but definitely not enough to quit my job, which was my primary income. What I then did is I used my existing skills that I never imagined people would pay for, and I became a consultant. So I was actually, having tried the product thing, I thought, what is another way I can make money online and quickly? Because I wanted to be able to quit my job. And my goal was to earn about about three and a half, four thousand dollars a month US so that I could basically justify quitting my job. That's about what I was earning at the time. And I just brainstormed, like, what, what skills do I have? And Asana which is this project management tool, was one of them. I actually come from a marketing background, but in the company that I'd worked for previously, I'd had experience actually setting up our team, training them on how to use Asana. And the company, my boss, actually paid me a bonus. Uh, I think it was about $2,000 or something, $1,500. Um, he paid me a bonus because he said, Paul, what you did there was so so great, so valuable for the company, and we want to give you this bonus. And so I was just drafting, like, what's some skills that I have and on this website, clarity.fm, which is sort of a dial and expert service, I listed some skills and people started booking calls with me to get help with Asana because these software companies, Asana and Pipedrive, they don't have phone numbers you can call and people want to be able to talk to someone to get um, support questions answered. And so I was able to validate that idea and after ha having then worked with a few paying clients, I really doubled down and started refining my consulting offer. And so actually within a few short months uh, from starting, 
quitting, and I'll show you a graph that illustrates this in a minute, from starting to actually quitting my job in just a couple of months, um, I was able to quit my job in December 2016, and I spent the first half of last year, 2017, traveling Southeast Asia with my wife and uh, working remotely in Bali, Cambodia, Vietnam, Japan, uh, working remotely, doing my consulting while traveling. Um, and I think um, consulting is great, like I said earlier, because you can earn money much faster than you can compared to selling products or using affiliate marketing. This stuff can come later. I'm actually working on this stuff more now. Now that the consulting sustain me, sustains me, it keeps me going. Now I can focus a bit more time and energy on the products and on the affiliate marketing. But because those things take such a long time to get going, whereas consulting, I think you can get up and running very quickly. I think if you do want to build an online business, consulting or coaching online sharing some of the skills and expertise that you have is a great route to go. So that's a little bit about me and my story. Here's a graph that illustrates that transition. So I actually started consulting in July 2016. I earned about $1,400 during my first month. Um, a couple of months later, you see I actually quit my job in December. I did sort of about one to 2,000, had a $3,000 month there in October. And then I basically, after having worked for myself for a few months, and I realized, yeah, this is pretty sustainable. I was like, you know what? I can quit this because I was I was only working um, on this business part time. I was working full time. I was doing this in about 15, 20 hours a week. I was generating one and a half to three K per month. So I did that for a few minutes. And I, was, I, I was like, you know what? I can I can quit my job now. And actually, we went traveling the first five months of travel. Uh, last year, January to June, we were traveling. My income, you see, started to grow. Um, I was still only working part-time. I want to emphasize, I was only working like 20, 25 hours a week because we were traveling, we were having fun, my wife and I. I was still only working about 20, 25 hours a week, but my income was growing. I was doing four, 5K per month. Then I got home in June, July, and then started working on my business kind of full-time, didn't have the distraction of travel, and my business just hit another level. You can see I, I pretty much doubled my income. I went to 11K, got up to 13K in September. And this graph is now out of date. Um, there's a whole year of data, which I'm not, I haven't shown you here, uh, but my income this year in 2018 has really hit another level again as I've just continued to learn more about how to deliver more value, charge more, offer better solutions to people. And so the, the, the graph continues to increase, which is great. And like I said at the start, consulting for me has completely changed my life. It allowed my wife to quit her job. Um, it, uh, we've actually had a baby this year, so I'm now supporting our little family. And um, I have... Um, the flexibility to work on my terms, and I'm not working crazy hours either. I work maybe 30 hours a week, uh, so less than the normal full-time salaried employee. Here's a couple of quick photos. This is us co-working in Bali last year, my wife and I. You can see I've got the incredible sweat patch there, uh, working in the 30 degree plus heat, but this was a co-working space we worked from for about two months in Bali. Um, I actually did a presentation there. You can see we got our laptops around the table and drinking coconuts. I actually shared some of my experience. I made some great friends um, on that trip as well, and this is, this is one of the amazing things about virtual consulting is um, it allows you to get overseas, go and travel. The people you see around the table here, um, Bree, who you can see just on the corner of the table drinking the coconut, he actually invited me to come back and speak at his digital marketing conference in October that year. So just the opportunities that open up when you start virtual consulting are, are, are incredible. And, and John in the corner there has become a great friend as well. Uh, my wife Haley, yeah, she quit her job in September last year to join me in the business. We now work from another co-working space here in uh, Takapuna, Auckland, New Zealand, and it's great being able to work with my wife. Actually, she's not working with me anymore. We've just had a baby, so she's uh, actually at home looking after him. So that's a little bit about me, my story. The reason you're here, though, is uh, you want to get some um, tips on how to get started. So I have five tips today. The first thing is you need to find and validate your idea as fast as possible. And excuse me, I'm looking at my notes down here. Um, as I said, when I shared my story, look inwards, look at yourself and think, what are the skills that you already have that people ask you about all the time? And this is maybe a tip you've heard before. And I, I feel a little bit cliched sharing this, but it really is uh, super important to look at yourself, look at the skills that you have, try and think, what do people ask me about? Ask your friends, ask your family, what am I good at? And try and use that as the basis to think, how can I turn this into a coaching consulting business? So with the example I gave, I was actually in a marketing job and I, I had a little bit of experience transitioning our company, setting them up on Asana and training our team on how to use it. That was just something that came natural to me because I, uh, um, I'm a very geeky sort of productivity orientated person. 
And so, and my boss paid me that bonus. And he actually said as well, he said, Paul, you're actually really good at teaching people. I don't know if you realize, but the way you communicate, the way you show us the tool, it was very, made very clear the training was really good. And I, it was something I never knew about myself. Uh, and so that was great getting that feedback. So really, in terms of finding your idea, look in, look in words at yourself. What skills do you currently possess that you can potentially monetize? And I do encourage you to try and think business to business. You can do coaching and consulting to consumers, to personal people. Maybe you want to help someone coach them on how to train their dog. But I do think it is going to be easier to charge higher prices and um, get a good fee when you are charging uh, for a professional service, more like business coaching, consulting, productivity in this case, web development, accounting, tax advice, whatever your area is. Uh, you don't have to go the business route, but I do think it can be easier if you pick more of a professional skill. And then so the second part of this tip here is to validate your idea. So a lot of people in the beginning waste a lot of time um, setting up a website, getting business cards made, um, doing stuff on YouTube to basically avoid actually doing the work and avoid sales because that's for a coach or a consultant, that is a massively important skill. It's actually being able to sell, finding people that need your service and being able to sell to them. And we, we waste our time tweaking websites and things because it feel, makes us feel productive, but we're actually procrastinating and avoiding the hard work, which is trying to find clients and selling to them. So you need to, don't worry if you don't have a website, don't worry about that. Just try and find your first few paying clients as fast as possible. And so like I said, I used a website, clarity.fm which is a dial and expert service. I just listed some skills that I had up there and people started booking calls with me to get help. And that was a very quick way that I was able to validate, do people wanna pay for this? And after that, that's when I could justify spending a bit more time on a website, setting up Google AdWords, YouTube, that kind of thing. So that's my first big tip is find and validate your idea as quick as possible. Find your first few paying clients. Uh, next, define your target monthly income. So for me, it was really important. I did not wanna quit my job. Um, it was really important that I be able to replace my salary first because I have a mortgage to pay. I want to support uh, my wife and be able to contribute to our household income. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to quit my job until I can replace my salary. And so you have to define, well, what do you need to earn to do that? Well, you obviously use your salary as the basis, but then you need to think about what are your expenses? If you are running a business, there are certain expenses like software products you need. Maybe I, I spend... $12 a month on pipe drive. Um, I have a co-working space that I now pay for. I didn't in the beginning, but I now have that as an expense I need to cover. You know, I've got other tools that I use. I've got an accountant I need to pay for now, maybe insurance that I might need. So you do need to work out, yes, maybe your goal is to replace your salary, but what are the extra expenses that I need to cover on top of that and work out a target monthly figure. So for me to start with, my figure was about three and a half thousand US dollars per month. That's what I needed to cover my expenses and replace my salary. And I wanted to do that for a few months before I replaced my, before I quit my job. So for whatever, your number's gonna be different. Your living expenses, paying your rent, paying your mortgage, supporting your family, um, your salary, where you live, that's gonna determine your monthly income. So your number will probably be different to mine. And this number might change over time as well. So when Haley quit her job in September last year, I changed my target monthly income. I was actually, I'd already been consulting for nearly a year, but I, um, I still had that monthly income figure in my head. And I said, well, for Haley to quit her job, now our target monthly income is more like eight and a half thousand because our expenses are going up. Haley's not earning a salary. So that was our new target monthly income. And so I always have this in the back of my mind as this is the number I need to hit every single month in order to be able to justify doing what I'm doing. And it's really nice having that very tangible goal to aim towards. And the way I look at it as well is this is my sales number. This is my sales target for the month. Everything else above and beyond this is gravy, is, is bonus. And so I usually, no, in fact, since I started, I've always earned at least my target monthly income. I've had months where I've doubled or tripled that number. Um, but for me, that's a bonus. As long as I cover this target monthly income and I'm earning more than I was earning as a salaried employee, that's that's the goal. I don't really care too much about earning a huge amount of money. I don't um, actually want to scale my business or employ people. Everything else above that is, is gravy. But this is a really um, important tip is to define what you need to earn to justify and, and make a successful consulting business. Number three, when you are further down the line, then you can start using marketing channels that match your business to find clients. 
So there are obviously loads of ways to market online to find people um, who could potentially pay for your service. We've got Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, there's LinkedIn, there's Pinterest, um, you've got Google AdWords, SEO you might need to be doing. There's lots of different ways you can spend energy and time trying to find clients. And you need to focus on the couple, the one, two or three that really are going to move the needle and help you to find the clients that you're looking for. So you need to think, well, what is the, what is the purchase behavior of someone that is going to work with me. So for me, I'm consulting on Asana and Pipedrive. These are software products. So a new user who needs help with this tool might go to Google to learn how do I use Asana, or they might go to YouTube to learn what, what is this tool Asana, what are some tips that I can get, how can I use this. So for me, Google and YouTube have been massive, um, massive sources of inbound leads for me. And I don't actually do any outreach anymore. Everyone who I work with finds me. I don't have to go looking for them. And they find me through Google. So I make sure that I've made a really nice landing page that explains what I do and it ranks really well organically on Google. And you can learn more about SEO to do that. But I also use Google AdWords, so I bid a little bit more. And if, you're, if somebody searches for an Asana consultant or an Asana expert, I wanna be at the top. And I, I don't bid on other keywords. I want to look for. I want to bid on people specifically looking for an expert who are actually saying I need someone to help me with this. And so I'm willing to pay to get in front of those people. So Google has been a great source for me. YouTube as well. You know, YouTube new users they do go to YouTube to learn how to use these tools. A little le lower quality than uh, Google, I would say, because you get some freeloaders who are you know just uh, looking for advice and maybe get in contact for some free advice. They don't want to pay for the consulting, so you do have to do a little bit of qualification there to weed out the uh, the lower quality leads. But I do get plenty of good quality stuff through YouTube as well. Um, so for me, things like LinkedIn, Pinterest, all these, Facebook, I don't do anything on any of those other platforms. Even though other consultants, coaches, you might have huge success on Pinterest if you are maybe trying to meet, reach more of like a female demographic. I don't know. I'm probably generalizing massively there. Um, but you really just want to pick the couple of marketing channels that align with you and your business and how your customers make decisions and how they're going to find you. Number four. Price higher than you think and don't bill by the hour. So this is actually something I did from day one is I pretty much adopt fixed pricing. Now, the default behavior for a coach, a new coach or a consultant is, oh, I need to come up with an hourly rate. And that's, that's kind of scary. You're like, oh, okay, well, I'm earning maybe $20, $30 an hour at my salary. So maybe can I charge maybe $50 an hour? That seems like a lot. Oh, that's kind of scary. But I really want to actually earn like $100 an hour. That seems like a ridiculous number. And so anyway, hourly billing... It's not good for you, and it's actually not good for your clients and customers either. The reason being is it actually encourages inefficiency. If you think about it, if you're being a good coach, a good consultant, you would do your job in less time. But for doing a good job, you would then earn less money. So that's not very good. So a bad consultant will then you know, stretch it out, have lots of meetings, uh, make the project seem like it's bigger than it is because now they because they want to earn a fair price and earn more money. So that's not good for the client. And obviously that it encourages dishonesty. Obviously, I hope people doing this wouldn't be dishonest, but it does encourage dishonesty essentially at the end of the day. It also puts barriers in place. If, you're, if your clients or customers want to talk to you, now they have to make an investment decision about should I pay that rate before they then ask you a question on the phone or something like that. I don't want people to have to make that decision every time they want to talk to me. So instead you charge a fixed price that covers the scope of the project and it's it's based on the value that you are creating. So for example, a recent example, a client of mine who I had caught up with uh, a couple of weeks ago said that in the last year, Asana has saved her over $60,000 because she, her team are more productive. She's been able to avoid hiring new staff. That's a very tangible result that Asana can deliver. It can help you reduce staff cost. It can make your team more productive. It can cut down on meetings. Um, and so um, we're able to quantify the value that this tool can create. So if somebody's saving 60, and that's that's actually a conservative number in my opinion, but if someone's saving $60,000 a year, it's not unreasonable to charge like 10% of that. So to charge $6,000 for a project where I'm helping them set up Asana, train them on how to use the tool, integrating it with their other systems, that kind of thing. Now with that, uh, the client is happy to pay that because, well, if you're helping them to be a more productive business at the end of the day, if you're saving them um, on a, you know, human resource cost and lowering staff turnover, making their team more productive, they are going to be happy to pay that fee. It also means you can deliver a higher value, higher quality service because now they can talk to you at any time. Maybe there's more flexibility in the scope. If they want to make changes as they're going, they can do that. It gets absorbed into your fee. Whereas with hourly billing, if they have a new idea, now again, there's that investment decision. Uh, do I want to pay this or not? 
Okay, number five, my final tip here, and, and these are sort of, um, I've laid these out in sort of the order in which you would tackle them, is to then start to systemize your business. So once you've really honed in what it is that you're offering, um, your consulting packages, that type of thing, then you can start to systemize your business to make yourself more productive and more efficient in what you do. So I rely heavily on my tools, Pipedrive and Asana, to track my leads, my clients that are coming in. I use Asana to track the projects that I'm working on with clients, how much time I'm spending on them, how much income I'm generating. And so I collect a lot of data about my business and my time and my income and where it's spent. Um, and then I've used Zapier to automate my, my systems as well. So for example, in my consulting business, uh, my first kind of call to action to people when they find me online is go and book a free introductory call. And they, they I send them a Calendly link so they can pick a time to get on my calendar. Zapier then sees them book that. It will then create a deal and activities and contact information in Pipedrive, which is my CRM. So all that manual data entry that I had to do before probably took me 10 minutes every time. Zapier does that for me. That alone saves me a couple of hours per week, I would say. Then further down the line, when they sign up, they pay, and the deal is won, great. Pipedrive has now done its job. I wanna copy a lot of information over to Asana, my project management tool, so I can successfully onboard the client. I've got tasks that I need to do to set them up and get started. And so again, rather than setting that up manually, Zapier does that for me. Um, so Zapier is a great way of systemizing my business, automating these key steps so that I'm not missing anything, but also just saving me time. Um, other ways you can systemize your business, <clears throat> using email templates. You know, when you've refined like your sales pitch, you've got a really good email that you like to send when you send a proposal or a follow-up email that you like to use. Actually document those down. I use a tool called Text Expander where I can save my email templates and then I can just type a little keyboard shortcut and it spits out the text and generates that template for me. So this is really step five. And the purpose of this step is to get you to that next level where, okay, you're earning a good income. Now, how can we make you more efficient? How can we save you time and really help you to build that, that lifestyle business? If you want to be traveling, if you want to spend more time with your kids, systemize your business so that you can save time, cut down on redundancy and, uh, and yeah, just be more efficient. If, even if you, um, don't want to, you don't have kids or you don't want to spend more time surfing or doing what you do. If you just want to work more on your business, great. Now you've systemized it. Now you can take on more clients. So that is my fifth and final tip. I want to thank you for uh, watching this this presentation today. Like I said, I'm really passionate about this topic. Um, I, consulting has changed my life. I know so many people want to work for themselves uh, online, and I think consulting is a great path to do that. So if you want to learn more about my how I got started as a consultant, if you want to go into more detail on pricing, how I set up a website, um, my landing page, copy, proposal templates, I have put everything I know about consulting into my How to Become a Virtual Consultant program. If you use the code PRODCON, you can save 30% on the program um, up until the end of this month. You can find that at paulminers.com slash virtual consulting. And uh, please just stop by my website, hit me up on Twitter, um, let me know what you're up to. If you have any questions, please let me know. I wanna help you in any way that I can. And one more time, thank you very much for watching this presentation.